Hey, hey, Moochie. Hey. Coming back, hey. looking good. Back. Welcome back. Welcome right. back. Right. <laughs> Nita and looking beautiful favorite. as always. Yeah, y'all's favorite, favorite Moochie. The time, I'm trying to get to <laughs> Well, it's all good, Moochie. While you're still getting together, Jay, give us your synopsis of how this episode went down. How'd you like the episode? Oh, man, it was great. I mean, I know we say it every week, but, uh, you know, every week it get better. And uh, this was one of the best episodes. Um, yeah. So, you know, I know uh, it was kind of weird having it released, then taken away, then put back. They should have yeah, just yeah. let it stay and then put the week right. off this week. Why put it and take it back? What was that all about? Yeah, that, you, you messed up. Too many people saw it. They should have left it, but... Anyway, with that being said, you know, Lamar, he, 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 you know, he had a big old cigar uh, put out on his shoulder or whatever. <laughs> Looked like somebody used him for an ashtray up in that piece. But, uh, you know, um, yeah, he falling apart in more ways than one. And, uh, you know, it, it's looking pretty good. Meech, you know, we, we I ain't going to get into it too much, but it, it was a good episode. We'll get into it a little later. Definitely. And, and Muchella, your overall thoughts about the episode? All right. I, this was a good episode. Mm -hmm. One of my predictions came out. Lamar got hit with them hot ones, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> At least one. <laughs> he got hit with a hot one. <laughs> that his ass did. He got hit with a hot one. And let me just let me just show pure respect to my audience. Thank you for turning out. It's right now we've got 75 of y'all in the building. Please give us 75 likes. Shout out to Danny Girl. Shout out to Barika. Shout out to Tim, my homie Tim, who just follows everybody on this panel, shows support, likes their videos, leave comments. He is the ultimate YouTube subscriber, and we're grateful to have you, my brother. So is everybody else that's up here. Um, yeah. Tomorrow, Tim. tomorrow, yeah. I will be... Some of y'all been following me for high time. And y'all think I'm going to be using hyperbole when I say this. The absolute best episode of TV that has came on for an hour this month was High Town's episode last night. Yes. That thing yes, was a, it was a blaze. And ladies wow. and gentlemen, tomorrow on my channel, one on one, I will have the big homie, Aceto in an interview at 8 p.m. And one of your favorite subscribers of mine is going to pop in and ask a couple of questions. And if you want to know who that subscriber is, you're going to have to tune in and see who it is that's going to be asking these questions. Y'all yeah. ready to talk this BMF? Yes, sir. Let's do it. I'm coming to you first, Moochie, since you're just getting back over your jet lag and everything, the Germany jet lag. <laughs> We're going to go with you first. Now, you guys can go anywhere you want to go in terms of giving your explanation because I'm only going to be here at 10 o'clock tonight. So we're just going to be all over the place. We've all seen it. Audience has seen it. We're going to go one place here and there. So, Moochie, I'm going to just take you. I'm going to start you right here, Moochie. Mm -hmm. Since you called this, <laughs> Superman went down, Moochie. <laughs> He's up here cutting up people's houses that he want to go and attack. In here getting right, and did y'all catch that box that had the missing girl on it? You see the duct tape that he put all in his bag, his gun. He's up here burning up people's houses in a bowl, eating some damn cereal. And Moochie, as he's eating his cereal, getting ready to go, old Tiny shows up to get that ass. Moochie, talk about this scene when Lamar got hit. This was your prediction. Turn off the lights. <laughs> <laughs> Lamar got everybody thinking they can sing now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bringing the old crazy. school back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got to say, Moochie? You, 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 don't, you don't got no... Look, listen, his aim was better than Marvin. Hello? But they ain't get him. <laughs> Okay? Dang. His aim was better than Marvin. Damn. God, don't be more careful. J-Mo jump in there, man. <laughs> about, about, I'm going to tell you, J-Mo, I was a little nervous, though. There was a part of this scene that had me nervous. When they started going down the steps looking for him, I'm thinking, yeah. I know this dude crazy. Right. I thought somebody was going to catch a little, you know, double whammy around the corner. 
But uh, they they had Lamar up in there burning pictures, doing a little voodoo up in there. You know what I mean? Had the candles lit, pray, making a prayer. I'm, you, your house is going to burn like this picture. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, he walked out and then got caught with one in the shoulder. Next thing you know, he was doing a little shoulder lay, shoulder lay. He had to lean back up in that house right quick. You know what I'm saying? And uh, hit the hit the flow. Um, and uh, it was almost curtains for him, but you know he is a good villain, so they made him stay. But he disappeared like Chucky up in that piece. Where the hell his ass go that fast? You know what I mean? Right. right, they had Biggie and Tiny up in there looking for him. Uh, I don't know which one is which, but uh, they was <laughs> they that weird here, and somehow they can't find him. It ain't take that long to come up in there, and right. you know what I mean. Right, Bruh. he over here dripping. They tried to follow the drip, but you know what I'm saying. Didn't know where the hell he didn't went. Where he had a damn uh, trap door up in there. It was a pirate ship up in this piece? What the hell? <laughs> Right. Dude, dude must went out the bathroom window the same way he got. You know what I mean? Behind, must be how he escaped his own damn place because right. he just disappeared. That was crazy. The right. Blood drip disappeared because they showed the blood drip. Then all of a sudden the blood drip was gone. It's like, whoa, wait, this, this dude is the black Superman. Right. right? <laughs> Neither the diva. What did you think about this scene? They came and got Lamar. Yeah, I, man, it was going according to plan. And then the the thing about this show is, is that they've been subverting all of my like. I think it's gonna go one way, and then it goes another way. Like it's been doing a lot of that. And with this, because I thought because Lamar was ready. Did you see how he was packing that bag up? He yeah, was, yeah, he yeah. was he had right. He, okay, you got zip ties. Why you need the rope? <laughs> so he's about, <laughs> about, to, about to tie him up and hang him. Right. I thought about. I was like, dude, you got zip tie. What the hell you need with the duct tape? Exactly. The, the, exactly. the zip ties, the rope, all tape. He must was thinking he gonna get like rope up the whole family. Hey, Maybe stay the, ready. You ain't gotta the, get ready. The duct tape was for people's <laughs> mouth. That's no, what that's the duct right. tape is for. Right. He was going to put duct tape over your mouth so that you couldn't talk. That's what he was going to do with the right. duct tape. He was going to so use I, that rope to hang him high. While we were in there, I thought that he was going to fire back. I thought he was going to fight back or whatever, but he just kind of like disappeared like, I don't know, like the Flash. I was like, what the hell? I did not see it playing out like that. I swear I thought I saw him fighting back or you know, because he, he had his pieces. He was ready, too. So I was surprised about that. But you know what? I didn't know he got hit. I, I think it was kind of unclear. We know that the the the, the glass and, and everything had kind of did that. But we didn't know if he got hit or not. So, well, at least I didn't know. So I thought he was going to be popping. I thought they was going to get popped for real because I thought he was going to really fight back. That was mm. that was my thing, but I like the way it started out. They needed to apply pressure. Um, Meach, he kept his hands off, kept his hands clean, and let Tiny do the work. But it ain't even work out like that. <laughs> well, Nita, I'm gonna stick with you because this is one man you had a debate about. My perspective is when you first meet a dude or a woman, and you sense crazy with your spider senses. Cut their ass off immediately. Because this is what happened with Monique and Lamar. Lamar thought that he still had such a hold on this woman, he could just slide into her damn house. Now, here she is getting home. She don't know that she's got something worse than mold in her bathroom toilet. To she, she's got something worse than plumbing issues in her bathroom. And this old Detroit diesel goes to the bathroom. She sees Lamar. Lamar's trying to basically make a plea with her. She's like, hell no, I'm calling the police. He grabs her and beats the snot out of her and probably would have killed her if it wasn't for the little daughter coming in there looking at him like, no, you didn't. Mm -hmm. Take it away, Nita. This is this is that crazy I want you people to avoid. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, it's that crazy, but at the same time, she was getting rah-rah with him. At this point, he was already in her house. Like, she couldn't even put up a barrier against him. He broke into her house. And so 
the the thing that she messed up with was hitting him in his in his uh, wound. She hit him in the wound first, and then that just kind of like sent him like, well, I mean, we know he ain't too far from it ever. Mm -hmm. He always can go there. So do you that kicked in a defense mechanism? Do you feel like if she wouldn't have hit him, she might could have made it out and got to the police or got out the house? I don't know because she kept on threatening him. She kept on saying she's gonna call the police. She's gonna call the police. And you know, I really don't think that was the smartest. But the thing is, is that it was out of her control because he was already in her house. Like she tries to put a barrier up there. Like what well, she tried last time with the with the screen door. But this one, I was just like, "Ooh, girl, he might got you." <laughs> But yeah, I'm so glad that that daughter was there because for some reason he's always able to snap him out of it real quick or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely like I said, I said that that letter shouldn't have got to her. That was my stance. But then at the same time, when you know you're dealing with crazy, yeah, you should let crazy be crazy over there. Yeah. She so, shouldn't have failed. She yeah. shouldn't have failed for that letter. She right. should not have failed for that, that letter. That was my thing. Yep, she should have left. Let it be. Um, J Mo, jump on in there, brother. How'd you feel about this, man? I, 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 you know, when she got ready to go in that bathroom, my, my head was just like this. <laughs> right. You say she got something in there worse than mold. That was that little turd that don't flush, just keeps swirling around up in that piece. <laughs> <laughs> she, she had a floater up and that boy came up and staking. Um, but, uh, you know what I mean? She, she, she should have played along. She keep talking all the time. Like I said before about calling the police, never do it. You don't keep threatening somebody. And even after he beat her, she still didn't call the police. But what she should have did is when he came talking about, I need some help. Give me a little time. She shouldn't be like, all right, I got you. Just stay here. Close the door. Then went and called the police on his ass. And then, you know what I mean? Gave him something to drink. Kept him calm and all relaxed. And then next thing you know, them boys show up and took his ass up out of there. You know, she kept on threatening to call the police. She didn't even call after he didn't win all haymaker Mike Tyson on her ass. She should have called then. But she called me, of all people. Like, why you you messy? Why you keep bringing these two against each other and staying in the middle of this stuff? Like, you... You kind of, in a way, bringing drama on you. Not that she deserved or brought that on her to get beat, but you staying in the middle of this stuff. Like, you need to, like, really get out of that. Call the cops on them. You know what I mean? You you keep playing these two against each other, and, you know, you wonder why you in the middle of some mess. So, you know. Okay. And like uh, okay. Nita said, that damn little letter <laughs> written on toilet paper should have never worked in the first place. <laughs> mm -mm. Jump on in that Mucci and like J Mo said, do you feel like she should have called the police or Meach? Because I feel like she called Meach because she wanted street justice at this point. She didn't want him to just get she wanted some she wanted a bullet, another bullet to go in him, I feel like, which is why she called Meach. So what do you what do you think was her main motivation for calling Meach instead of going to the police? Because you know why? The police was called before he, and he fin finessed getting out of going to jail and went to the nut house. Mm. So mm. why call them? Because you know he's not going to go to jail. Mm. He's just going to act like he's crazy, crazy. But to me, <clears> it's <throat> like when he see anger, when he get anger, he black out. When he get angry, he blacks out. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. that was one of them blackout moments until the little girl was like, Mom! <laughs> and, then, mm -hmm. and then it was like if you see this face like he couldn't believe oh she, she seen me like this right she said, mm -hmm. and but she, he really don't want to look like that to her because he, 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 i'm sure she's heard stories about him mm -hmm. but now she's seen it herself mm -hmm. so now mm -hmm. in her eyes he even look bad because even though meach kidnapped her he didn't hurt her <laughs> he didn't hurt her didn't threaten her it didn't feel like she was being held there against her will. That's right. true, but not that her, but he got everything her. he needed yeah, in time. Not to her. Right. Not to her. But, but he got what he needed in time. What if it took longer though? Her. Then what would he, he have done? I don't think he had any intentions on hurting her. He just said that. Because right. he knew that that was Lamar's vice. Like that's his that's his kryptonite. I think Meach might have did something to that girl if it would have took longer than a day. If it would have took two, three days, what are you going to say? Forget it. Never mind. 
I tried, man. It didn't work. Here you go. He was mm-hmm. desperate. He would. He couldn't have did. Then he really would have looked weak. You know, mm-hmm. that was a desperation card. And I agree with what you said about she wanted the street justice. But what if Meech got killed or she got somebody else killed? You know what I mean? Now you putting other people, you know, and getting people killed, putting people live in danger and stuff. And yeah, she uh, she ain't in. She she should have called the cops, like you said. He may have got off, but at the same time, he got a record now. So it's not like he a first offender, and that's domestic abuse. She bloody nose. She didn't wipe her nose so that she could, you know, make Meech upset and want to do something. She could have had that same energy for the cops. They would have saw not only do you have a prior, you know, record of going, you know, to jail or crazy house or whatever, um, but now you you have, you know, a record now of uh, uh, domestic violence. And, of course, it wasn't the same laws that apply today with domestic, but still, you know, you got a violent behavior, assault charges. And so I just think, you know, I mean, I get what she was doing. But at the same time, it made they like we saw they couldn't find him. Now, what if he end up coming back and shooting her or doing something to her for doing that? You know, um, either way, she could have got in trouble because if he called, she called the cops. He could have got mad and tried to do something for that too. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know, man. I just think she she in a bad situation. You know, don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I don't think she was making it better, but. Mm. You know, super chatters. I got something for you. Will Lawrence, Buzz 703, and the last one we just got right here from Beverly. And then we just got one from the big homie Eric after Monique dissed Meach on the porch. When she called, he should have said, Nope, call the cop. Okay, right. I ain't seen Eric Iverson in a minute. He, he stay up here. This right. is all for my super chatters. Enjoy. All right. That's who they need to send out to Lamar. That's who they need to send. Lamar to probably Lamar. know him already for where he was locked up. Probably do. Probably do. Um, let's see here. Mooches, your turn to finally go first. <laughs> I'm gonna take you to the end of the story. Take it to this conversation that was going on. Let me make sure I got the right clip. I did. Coach Cop calls up me, meet, meets up with me. Basically, in essence, to say, I need some info on who took out my partner. Whether you give me information or not, I'm depending on you. I'm still the biggest dog in this yard. Don't think you too grown. Mucci, how did you interpret this scene, and where do you think Coach Cop is trying to go? I don't need to show y'all the sausage. Just let me get out of there. What's that? <laughs> let, me, let me get back up here. Sausages. Where, 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 where we going with this, Mucci? I think with this whole thing, is he going to give up Kato? <clears throat> but he's, he's, he doesn't know what's going on with Kato yet. Because basically, she wants to. She's the one that did it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So is he going to give her up once in, in, the, in the next episode? Because we already saw the trailer was going to go, go down. If anybody saw your breakdown, we, we got a, a gist of what might may or may not happen. Mm-hmm. So, and I feel like it, eventually, Meech is going to have to get his hands dirty. Mm. Okay. And that. and that's where I was with where I am with that. I feel like eventually he, he's been staying away from putting his hands in anything as far as um actually pulling the trigger. But I think he's gonna have to get his hands dirty. Now he was about to get them hands dirty this last episode right. when him and B Mickey took off. Mm-hmm. And when looking for Lamar, he was ready to get them hands. Who pulled the in. shot? Who shot the shot? Um, B- it had to be Mickey. He too trigger happy. So yeah, Meech okay. blocked it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jump on in there, Dita. What, how do, what do you think is going to go down with Coach Cobb and Meech? Oh, man. this I mean, this was tense to me. I was just like, oh, boy. I don't know how they're going to do it. I still think 
in order for them to work together for the better good, Meech is going to have to think. He's a thinker. So he's going to have to think. He's going to have to, like, when he gets the information about Kato from B. Mickey and they try to devise some kind of plan or something, they're going to have to do something. They're going to have to be a couple of steps ahead and come to Coach Cop and try to, like, broker some kind of something and I because I don't think he wants to get his hands dirty I don't think he's going to kill Lamar I think jail or the cuckoo house or whatever is going to be the outcome for that because I, I still don't see <laughs> because of the way they were raised Nita, the I, cuckoo I house. Don't, they don't have it in them right yeah, now I, I can see him standing there. Nita, one flew over, over the cuckoo, cuckoo nest <laughs> that's what we, we still call it the 19 sick the cuckoo house <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's going to go to the night house yeah and I think um, Monique is going to play a part in it because uh, yeah. somebody threw that out last week and I said that's genius that's genius right there Okay. And Jay she's Moe. gonna have to be calm, time. and she's gonna have to play it right. And if she don't play it right, it might be her last episode. She might be collateral damage, but I think well, that might be the way to go. I don't know if she tells the truth or not. Then I'm gonna come to you, Jay. Yeah, but she went on episode. IG and said yeah, that was her last. Last episode. night was her last episode, and we still don't know who the baby daddy is of her kid to this day. Mm. Why would last night be her last episode? Ain't nothing happened to her. Exactly. I <laughs> mean, they're gonna move on with other parts of their life. Cause remember, this is you know that they they doing like they do in comics. They're taking source material, then they remix it, adding their own stuff to it. Mm-hmm. So maybe they just done with the use of her character. Maybe, maybe for this season. Up in league cause she's so scared. You know what I'm saying? She um, don't, she don't know how or maybe she just meant for this season, not period. Yeah, maybe mm, yeah. So. I could see that. I yeah, see that, Jay. yeah, maybe so, this. Jay, what do you think about Coach Cop and the meetup and where where are these two gonna part ways at? Man, this seemed so real to me in the sense that it shows how people take you for granted when they get too used to you and get too comfortable. Mm. And Coach Cop had to check Meech because Meech then took it for granted. Dude, I'm a police officer. I'm a cop. I'm a grown man. You a drug dealer and a kid. You need to come to me correct. Yeah, we worked together and you gave me a little money. But at the end of the day, I could take your life right now. I could say that you tried to kill me and I'm a cop. My story going to override. For one, you ain't going to handle it. You'll be dead. Mm-hmm. So my story is going to supersede whatever the hell you talking about. You don't run shit just so like, and this goes in life period. Sometimes you, you be nice and help people out. Next thing you know, they think they was the one helping you out or something. No, nah, that ain't how it went. You know, uh, you got used to me uh, doing this or that, or you think that that's how it's supposed to be. No, I was being nice and helping you. At the end of the day, I don't have to do this. You know, it's a lot of times people sometimes forget how the relationship actually is because they get too comfortable and and they forget and not be appreciative. And like he said, you need to come and help me with this. Meech talking about, I can't help you this, that, and the other. When you need to act like you was going to help is what he should have did. He should have been like, hey, I don't know who did that, but I'll look into it and I'm going to try to look out for you, man. Sorry about your partner. And then maybe drove off and didn't do shit. But you don't come talking about, I ain't going to do this. I ain't going to do that. I can't help you. Hey, I got stuff on you, too. Uh, man, who the hell are you talking to? You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm a, I, that's the same way he went wrong with Pat. Exactly. Exactly. And it seems that a lot of people do that same thing with uh, Cash Doll Monique and what she was saying to him, to, to Lamar. Like, you are forgetting this dude ain't got it all. Stop threatening this dude with the cops and putting him in jail and, you know what I'm saying, put, hitting him in his little cigar wound. You know what I mean? Like, with, you have to always be aware of the, the re- dynamic in a relationship. You know, a lot of times people forget that, you know, take it for granted and, and then say stupid stuff or do stupid stuff and then want to be mad or act shocked when somebody got to remind you or check you or put you back in your place. 
And so, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Meech kind of looked a little shook, a little shock a little bit that he had to tell him, dude, I could take your life. I could either put you in jail right now uh, or kill you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, uh, you need to chill. Like he said, I got stuff <laughs> on you. What the hell make you think you're going to get a chance to use it? Mm. You will be dead right here where you stand right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And Meech had to shut up for a second because it's like, dude, uh, you didn't got used to me. You thinking I'm Coach Copper. Hey, I ain't just Coach Copper. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I'm a <laughs> copper. You know what I mean? Yeah. At the end of the day. So you should be thankful that I ever worked with you and you need to always respect that dynamic. You know? Mm. Shout out to Barika. Coming through with the five dollar super chat, very very yeah. grateful. <clears throat> J Mo, while we on you, I'm gonna take you somewhere else. <laughs> Let's go. I crack myself up sometimes. <laughs> well, let it I out so we can all laugh. I already done show the pictures. Let me put it back up. <laughs> Kato cooking sausages and shit <laughs> because Lamar done left the crib. Mm. B Mickey comes in. Grabs this gun that Lamar done put his fingerprints on. I told y'all this gun was going to come back. I told y'all this, right. this is the gun. I told you. But anyway, he wants to know why in the hell Lamar leaving my place. And I want to know where in the hell did Kato's breast shrink to when this gun got it. <laughs> because earlier in this episode when she was about to get it in with him, she had some nice pool ones and now all of a sudden they gone. <laughs> So J Mo, I just said that. <laughs> so, so J Mo, she was able to finagle and finesse B Mickey into some kind of a lie that they're gonna be Bonnie and Clyde and they're gonna take down Lamar. What? 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 To speak on it, J-Mo. Drop yeah. some knowledge on the people. I mean, you know, they kind of had to do a little subliminal message there with the sausage, you know. She know how to marinate some sausage and uh, that show, <laughs> you know what I mean, that uh, she know how to marinate sausage properly because that's what saved her ass, you know what I mean, that she didn't marinate his little sausage and uh, had his little <laughs> sausage smothered in tube, so- in, in tube, so- no, what happened, uh, and uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, what damn, with the tidy whities he has uh, smothered sausage and tidy whities or whatever. And uh, you know what I mean, now she got it, uh, you know, on the on the grill. And as far as her little tickle bitties, man, you know, hey man, ladies, they wear a brazier, man. When you take that brazier off, they fall back into the left. You know what I mean, like JF can back into the left. They bloop bloop. It's all right. They they still good. Bruh. They there. <laughs> they relaxed right now. They ain't on point. So you no. know they. She ain't lose them. They just they just chilling and leaning to the sides. <laughs> <laughs> she a little young for that, but it's all right. I like a little lean. That gun came out. I was like, man, damn. Everything started to run. The gun came out. Like like it was a weenus. <laughs> Took the air out them dang things. What <laughs> what you think about this scene and do you do you believe do you believe B Mickey is really down with this scheme or he's acting? I think I think he's I think he's open. I think so too. He's still looking at her sideways. Yeah. I think he's open cuz you know she um put the cookies on him. Uh-huh. But she's still he's still looking at her sideways. Like you had this dude in my house. In my right. house. Funny you said cookies because you know she was Cookie Lion in Empire, the young Cookie Lion. Yep. <laughs> was she? Yeah. yeah. I know she played in Acrimony. She was the young Taraji in Acrimony. Oh, okay. So yeah, she had two roles playing young Taraji. And, and she got a new movie coming out where she going to star as Rihanna because she looked just like her. She too. Oh. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. She kind of yeah. looked like Rihanna a little bit. Yeah. yeah. They could put the contacts on her eyes or something. I mean, I mean her forehead ain't that big, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Need a jump on in there, man. Y'all, y'all, boy. <laughs> That was the first thing I said, Lamar. I said, where the hell did her titties go? She was sitting on the <laughs> straight up dude. I was like, yeah. what? I, like, I missed that. I was like, hold up. I'm like, does she got a body double? She looked a like body she double. <laughs> I was like, what? I, I 
had to look, I had to look twice too, man. I had to look twice too. I was like, whoa. Show a picture with the things on point, man. Let me look. Uh, where, right. Uh, where because is that they were on point earlier. Yeah, they were on that, point. She had that nice, pretty pink bra on. Yeah, no she took the tissue out. She had on the Victoria's Secret. I don't have that. They probably, pushed, they probably was pushed up where they just jumped up. Like, oh yeah, yeah. How, how they was doing it? <laughs> how they do it, Mochi? Take that picture down. I should die. <laughs> I, I missed it. How they do it? How they do it? Let me see. There. Yeah. Oh shit. Boy. Movie magic. Hey. Are y'all happy y'all got y'all Moochella back? <laughs> y'all put them hammers up for me. Y'all know she like them hammers. Damn. Put them hammers up <laughs> for the Mooch. Um, but um, um, did get deflated when when she saw Lamar. Like, Lamar. Right. That's right. Wah, 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 wah. Her body ain't catch up for TV. No, no. Man, I didn't um, know they had perform like a wee wee. I was trying to, with that, I was trying to figure out how the hell, like, was he following her? Like, how did he know her exact location? How did he break in? It was just kind of a little weird how it played out. And then, like I said, this, this episode was a lot of subversion because I knew Lamar was going to kill B. Mickey. I kept saying, I said, he left his piece. They made sure they showed the piece yeah. on the thing. I said, oh, my God, he is going to kill him because he ain't got no weapon to fight back. Right. So that's that was a clue that kind of gave me, like, some kind of foreshadowing that something was going to happen to be Mickey. So all the while, I'm thinking it's going to happen to be Mickey, because, I, like I said, I didn't know Lamar knew that Cato was there, one, mm -hmm. where he lived at, two. Like, it just didn't make any sense for me to think another way. But all I was thinking is that when B. Mickey left out, he left that gun. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, he My left. question is this. Did he take the gun with him? No. B. Mickey? No. Because I was going to no. say, he took the Lamar gun with him. Lamar picked up the gun when he was in, he in the, the room. He was down of the murder. Oh, they, they're yeah. going to spin that anyway. I know they're going to spin it like that, but if he would have took the gun, that would have been perfect. <laughs> he would have been caught red-handed. They still yeah, could plant the gun on him. Oh, yeah. That's going to go with the setup for next episode. Right. And like I said, if they think about it and they don't try to do nothing stupid, Kato and B-Mickey, they have to play this right. They mm. cannot mess this up. They cannot think that they're going to try to get away or try to get together and do something and all that love, whatever, whatever. Y'all better get together with me. <laughs> let them know the information that you got and let right. me try to do the do the thinking and, and set this thing up right using Coach Pop and getting getting this stuff all together and wrapped up like that. So yeah. they got all the pieces. They just got to put it together. They have all the pieces to get Lamar taken care of. Yeah, because like I said on my channel the other day, man, uh, the longer he take and telling Meech, then it's going to look like he knew the whole time and was working with her. And, you know, your ass going to get killed, you know, messing around with her, too. So Meech yeah. already told you, leave her alone. You want to get one more hit for the road, you know what I mean? He did. <laughs> he did. He did. He did. Yeah. He did, man. Y'all, you know, y'all are horrible. I got I got people in here saying who needs Tom Brady for Deflate Gate when you got Kato? <laughs> <laughs> Deflate Gate, that's a good Deflate one. Gate, boy. <laughs> All right, um, Nita, I'm back on you. You get the first crack at first bite at this apple. Oh boy, my boy Darius Obama. <laughs> <laughs> and in this funeral, you had his mother come at Nikki, which the police dropped the ball partly in that situation, but she came at Nikki saying, the police said you know the complete truth, and then she called out Terry, and she called out Mama Flannery and said, your boy selling drugs, my boy wouldn't be dead had it not been for your boy. She has a point, um, Nita, but what did yeah. you think? She didn't, uh, she didn't say nothing but facts to me. Yeah. Um, the only thing is that um, I didn't think she emoted the emotion well enough for me um 
as an actress yeah <laughs> like i don't know whether or not she was going for the angry mom but i thought she would be the more sad broken up mom so i didn't know whether or not it was a direction or acting standpoint or how she was, was calm she, yeah, was she, 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 being angry. she, she yeah. hit it for me because, because it felt it felt like she was trying to do both it felt like she was trying to portray anger um distraught with a little level of calm all at the same time yeah that, and so that yeah. created the stone face with her like you know because the, they could have took it where she was going over the top trying to fight but they didn't do that because they could let her get involved in her most like they could have had it where she was so distraught that she didn't even want to look at him just get them out of my sight but they i think they they found a mix for her and that was my perception okay okay yeah it was just questionable a little bit i was just like oh okay like you know what we doing here what we emoting <laughs> what are we doing but um she spoke no she didn't speak anything wrong i was surprised that she was actually able to do it but see the thing was and i think that's where the anger came in and where she was so stoic because the goal like it's the audacity for me that you can come up to me and you know that your family is behind in some kind of way like we don't know the whole story but we know that something is amiss and you know that would have got me upset and that's where i would have been like you know tapping into the anger and the calm face like don't 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 mess with me don't play me like that don't play in my face don't do none of that. So I think that's what that party was. But she didn't say anything wrong. And you know that mom, I she's so problematic to me. Like I, this episode, I was so upset because I still don't feel like she ate any of that humble pie that nope. I, I that I told her to have three episodes ago. And this episode, she kind of feel like she doubled down in some kind of. When she was talking to T's baby mama, I did not like that. I was just like, I didn't like it either. What? I, I didn't like it either. We we about to go there next because that that <laughs> bothered me some kind of way. Like, like I was like, this, I feel like she um like she was a hypocrite. She's still in denial <laughs> with her kids. She on that river. She's yeah. Head. She still she think they can head. save T as if T is just yeah. like following T. Like this dude making his own decisions. And then try to bring that girl into it, talking about putting her in the middle of it. If he ain't listening to you and you his mama, why you putting her into that? Yeah, for what? It, it was this conversation right here. It it made me so mad. I had to dig up pictures of her on Fresh Prince of Bel Air when she was conning Will. Will uh -huh. was conning her out of all that jury. I was so mad. I was like, lady, stop trying to take your failure and protrude them on this woman who. She's mm -hmm. suffering herself. The baby mama right. is suffering already because she's already had this discussion with T. Yeah. T already basically told her, if, if you make me pick between you and the street, I'm picking the street. So right. I'm sure she's already been wrestling with this dude is getting into some mess. I need to make a decision about what I want to do. And now the mom is putting another level of pressure on the person who is the mother of her grandchild. Like, what does she think that, what does she think this girl's going to be able to do right. that she can't do? Right. She was projecting. Right. She right. was kind of like trying to take the blame off of her and, and it kind of put it on somebody else. I'm when, like, girl, when, when at this you? point, Nita, she need to do what the daddy said. We need to leave town, take our daughter and start this family somewhere else. That's what right. they need to really be doing. But right. That's she's, what I didn't understand. She's like, still trying to why save. Why you didn't leave the house when he left? Yeah. If he left, uh, we'll see. We'll see where it go. Um, jump in there, J Mo, any way you want to go. But before you do, let me just remind the people tomorrow at 8 o'clock p.m., I will have in the building a Cedo from High Town. He's going to break down his career. He's going to talk about his character on this show, season two. And he's going to let us know a little insight on where they might be going in the next season. Don't want to miss this interview to be me and him and one of your favorite people in my family is going to hop up here and ask him some questions too. Especially when he was up there talking about his third leg needs some action. And we ain't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, J-Mo, jump in there, man. Um, how, do you, how do you feel about the mom and what went on at the funeral? 
I mean, at the the first thing is, even though she was right on what she was saying about maybe it should be one of her kids dead and uh, Urkel Obama should be alive, you ain't about to come with that energy and cuss me and my uh, my kid out, and you know what I mean, and, and like that. You know what I mean? You you we hey, look, I feel sorry for your loss, but this ain't the place. We ain't about to. Have, I ain't about to have you all in my kid face telling all this talk, calling her a liar. And we about to keep it moving. We ain't about to stand there and, and hear all that. Um, even though what so she was you, saying was the truth. Did, did you see how the daddy stepped up this time? Daddy jumped up. They was trying to get his little girlfriend. Daddy poked his chest out this time. He was late as always. Late with the bills. Late with the rent. Late with the defense. Late on every damn thing, man. What the hell he was waiting on? Like, man, as soon as she just started saying, uh, asking her questions about it before she even called her a liar i'd have been like hey look this ain't the place for that right now like what the hell we here trying to mourn for your loss sorry for your loss this standing in front of this church you ain't about to start grilling her about what the damn happened in the police this that and the other what you know the stop it's over let's move you know what i mean to keep it moving you know and uh, they, they stood there and let her grill them in front of everybody, called my kid a liar, this, that, and the other. Hey, you trying to defend your kid? I'm going to have to defend my kid. You know, and, uh, you know, I feel bad because, you know, she was right. But at the same time, as a parent, you ain't about to just dog my kid out like that. My kid in tears and this and that and all that. Like, man, and I just paid for this funeral. If you so mad, give me my money back. You know what? What you know? She sure used it, didn't she? She, she did. did. She sure she used it. it. You know, <laughs> and that's more than seven thousand was like damn near twenty five, thirty thousand in today's money. So yeah, they drug dealer this or that. Well, why don't you, with your uh, you know, square self, pay for the own funeral? You know, um, but I'm sure she's looking at it like, man, this is the least I can take from y'all. I mean, but hell, you know what? My child mom, is the, dead. The thing was, is that I think if the mother had not said nothing to her, she would have went on about her business. That's I true. That, that is what started that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Who would have went, went about their business? The mom. Urkel Obama mama. Yeah, oh, she, okay. she was going and she was walking to the limousine. And then oh, okay, the mother okay. came up and right, said something. Right. So, that I, you know, I, that's why I said I didn't really fought it on her i put it on the mom meach mom because she started it she could she should yeah 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 you know, yeah they they kept wanting to be in her face, in your face. everybody right. gave y'all the the, the the look at the stuff everybody right. looking at y'all we saw you, you so she poked the bear so for she real and i would have told terry don't stay here for the whole thing you can come sign the book you know what i mean to get your ass up out of here like well, you ain't gonna do I nothing but said, make things worse. One thing I had said was how many crime bosses literally show up. Right. They, they and sat the soldiers. whole time. Right. They lose soldiers all the time. You see me change show up, and usually a, a funeral is a place where the adversaries is looking to find them to take them out. Crime bosses usually don't go to no funerals now. So right. Well, I mean, we thought that went um Look what happened to um Luke, not Luke, um in the girl in a snowfall. Yeah, she went to the funeral and she didn't want to go. Right, and you know that they know they notorious for drive by. Yeah. But right. you know what? Anyway, I think because Teddy kind of still <laughs> carries himself like a child, like he's a part of the family. He he was just going like he was a part of the family. I don't know what other reason why he would have went. But, but I mean, he's going to they want me to believe that this 25-year-old man is a 15-year-old boy. Like, first of all, I can't even get that in my mind. But I, the way it seemed like he just came because he, he was a part of the family. You know what I'm saying? He was right. a kid and he just came to the funeral because he was a part of right. the family. Because otherwise, I didn't see a reason why he went either. And I see uh, Victoria King said, we got to understand she grief stricken looking for someone to blame. I can relate. I understand and I everything, I, I get it. I, I know she grief stricken and looking, but you ain't about to do that as a parent. I got to protect mine too. 
You know, she a parent. She lost hers. She trying to do what she can for hers. I get it. And everything she said, she was 100% right. You know, but at the same time, yeah, she was right on every single thing. And even they knew it. Even the parents knew it then that that the daughter was lying, that Terry and Meech ain't really up to no good. And this little boy ain't did nothing to nobody and all this, that and the other. But at the same time, you ain't about to chew out my little girl right here on the porch. She can't defend herself. She in tears hurt. She was traumatized. She was there and saw it happen. She got to live with that the rest of her life. Who knows what that may make her go through with growing up. And yeah, you know, you, you still got to consider that pair. She's got to live without her kid because of these people's children. That's and true. Secondly, secondly, she got the bear poked by the mama. Right, and but but you got to keep in mind, her, as a she parent, just ran up on them willy nilly. That's true. She shouldn't have did that. But as a parent, you supposed to be making sure. I ain't hear you. T- Your mic is low. I can barely hear you. My bad. I, I thought she just ran up on her. Yeah. Right. That's true, but at the same time as a parent and like you got a daughter, I got a son. Like when my son go places, I need to talk to those parents, especially at that age. If I was that mom, I wouldn't have let Urkel Obama go into a drug dealer. She knew they was drug dealers. You're not going to be with that girl. You're not going to their house. So she dropped the ball and allowing your child to go there. As your daughter getting older, you're going to let her start going over drug dealers' house and try to date them? And then if well, something here, happens, here, you're going to be here, like, uh, it's Joe. Here's Joel. the problem with that. <laughs> here's the problem with that. Some of these, they, they are, those kids who's old enough that if they're going to do some sneaky mess, they're going to do it anyway. Look how they snuck away from the bodyguard. That's that was how, the downfall of everything. That's legitimately right. how that how in that situation, not the grand situation, right. but that moment, how he got killed in the first place because he they snuck away from the bodyguard. So right. I mean, but coming I mean, home from school, you can't control what your your kids are doing coming home from school. You're trusting that they're coming home from school, not hanging out with some drug dealers. Right. We don't know the whole story, but like she could have been picking him up from school herself. You know, it ain't like he he grown and this and that. Like I say, we don't know all of that. So I don't know what hours she worked and how she had to do all of this and that. So we don't know. And we only saw her just now. So I can't I don't want to make too many assumptions. But, you know, um, we don't know what she could have or couldn't have done to to prevent that. But I know that if my child. I'm not going to say it. Yeah. It, yeah. I'm not going to say it because I know, I know too many people who let their middle um, middle school age kids walk home. It's, it's just what it is. Yeah, they I mean. Come home and you trust them to come home. And I'm not going to pick up my kid if he's in walking distance from the school. <coughs> so yeah. I'm not going to be on my kid like that if that's what the routine is. Well, and he took it upon himself to do deviate and do something, walk her home or do something else. So, I you know, get I, it. a lot of times, like. But I'm like, I, my growing up experience. I, I used to walk home and go take the bus and stuff. But in my same class, I have a friend of mine. Dad used to pick him up on the city bus. He didn't even have a car. His daddy, would, we would laugh and make jokes, but his daddy rode the damn regular CTA, Chicago Transit Authority bus, to pick him up in high school. So he did it in grade school and high school, rode the city bus to pick him up. And they got on the city bus back together and went back home to make sure he stayed out of trouble. It's some people who parents had a car and picked them up. It's some people who parents, we just went and did what we did. And some people got in more trouble than others. You know, that dude didn't get into no trouble. Now, when he went away to college, that was a different story. But who knows? Maybe he could have got killed or anything could have happened in between that. I mean, you know, so it's different people. It's no set way to parent. You know what I mean? Some people give their kids more freedom. Some people don't. Some people feel they need to do certain things. Some people feel they don't. Um, You know, some people trust their kids and give them more responsibility at an er early age. Because for me, I wouldn't do it. I have to pick my child up. So with me, I couldn't do that. Right. I wouldn't have did that. Um, my son was a latchkey kid. He used to come home, 
and I <coughs> told her when I got to the end of the line. Right. Right. Yeah. And I couldn't do all of that. And, and for me, because my son, his maturity level, and and um, he's on the spectrum. I have to go and pick him up and take him. Like. I, I was in a situation where I almost got hit by a car because he's running out in the middle of the street, just, oh. just, just not thinking. He's yeah. twelve years old, so. But that's a, yeah, that's unfortunate. That's a different you know, situation than the most people, though. You know? Yeah, so you know, I guess it depends on the level of maturity <laughs> of your child, uh, what you are able to do. And I'm not going to write the story. If they're walking home, then I'm thinking that's their routine. They just walk home. Yeah. So, and yeah. Somebody yeah. say I'm victim blame. I didn't blame the mother and say it's no. her fault. I just said that you know, at the same time, she's blaming them for what her child did, and we don't know what she did. You know, to to tell him or discourage him for doing it. Sometimes people are too quick to point the finger, but you forget you got three more pointing back at you. You know, just like when my son going somewhere to his girlfriend when he first went, I went with him so that I can meet the people and I can see where the hell he going. That's my son. That's my only child. Like, I want to know what's going on. Now, he's been back and forth plenty of times and I don't go. But now I know, you know, what's going on. So I feel more secure in that. But that first time, if if my child is going to known drug dealers and stuff, I mean, that's not something that you take lightly. Because mm. they could be getting, somebody could be coming to shoot them and astray or something can happen to them, you know. Just like mm. when I was coming up, we didn't hang with our friends that, that was in the trap house. Because you could get raided in the trap house. I ain't trapping, but I'm sitting here playing yeah, games and smoking cool. weed. Yeah, now I'm going to go to jail because I'm in there. So, like, you got to know what you're doing and, and take responsibility sometimes for that, you know. But, you know, some people are so quick to blame everybody else and don't take responsibility for their own actions. I'm just saying, she was sitting there trying to chastise that little girl as if it's that little girl's fault. That boy was chasing after her. And Terry told her to get out and leave and don't come back. He came back. He That was his clue. Remember when they was on the couch kissing and Terry came in an uh, episode or two before and told him to leave, don't come back? So he came back. So I'm just saying, it's what that was the only girl that liked him. I mean, I know people like who they like, this, that, and the other. But come on, man, man I'm not gonna die or put myself in harm for that. Like, just like when I was growing up, it was some girls I liked, but they lived on the west side. I never went to visit them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, we, we're gonna end that right there. Yeah, the last right. thing we're gonna cover tonight, you get to jump in here, Moochie. Okay. Oh boy. <clears throat> Meech is getting chased by Detective Lopez, of which who said he was going to die first? Of course I did. I always tell y'all when people are going to die. And who comes and saves Meech from the hand of justice? Cato, right hook, Barry Bond style across the back of his noggin. What's up? Moochie, take that away. Thoughts on this? Is this going to be something Cato can hold over Meech's head? Was she showing loyalty to me? What was going on right here? I mean, when push comes to shove and once he tells her, well, the cousin tells her about, tells me about Lamar coming there, he might be able to hold it over her head. But I, right, with just right now, I don't know. Because she, she's the one that got the body. She killed the cop. Yeah. Mm hmm and, and, and Meech is not a snitch, so he ain't going to say nothing. He definitely not. Gonna I don't think that. he's going to snitch. No, nah, he's not going to do that. Mm -mm. Jay, what would you think about Cato saving Meech from the hands of Detective Lopez? Because Detective Lopez had a hard on for Meech. He, yeah. really, he really wanted him some Meech. And when he rolled Meech over, it's like, Meech. Right. It yeah. It's like his meat start going toward Meech. Right, right. I mean... She did a good thing as far as her rep and helping Meech, but at the same time, we don't know if Meech has some work on him. So if Meech didn't have nothing on him, what, he going to arrest him for standing out on the corner in their neighborhood? Like Coach Cop even said, man, what you doing? Why you chasing? Like, you can't, what, they can't walk down the street now? You know what I mean? So what, because they ran from you? They, they could have said it's raining in the dark and somebody chased us. I didn't know who it was. Well, if he was looking for Lamar, he might have had a damn one on him. He, 
Well, that's what I'm saying. We don't know what he had on him or not. So if he had something on him, then he could have actually got Meech for something. But we don't know if what she did was a big overreaction or did she really save him? You know what I mean? Because if he would have pulled Meech over and tried to take him in and Meech ain't have the hammer <laughs> or that work, <laughs> then she killed this dude for what? Now, yeah. of course, she didn't intentionally try to kill him when she hit him with the, you know what I'm saying, rusty trombone, you know what I mean, in the back of the head, uh, you know, hit him with the 57 Chevy tailpipe up in here, you know what I mean, but, uh, I mean, Meech, if I was Meech in that moment, I'd be like, damn, she all right, man, you know what I mean, yeah. she, she, she all right, she got my back, this, that, and the other, man, you know, she cool, I, I'm gonna stop calling her a foot soldier all the damn time, but, uh, then you see all the heat and stuff, you know. Plus, he probably didn't realize dude was going to die right then. But, uh, you know, hitting nice. somebody in the back of the head is the worst place to hit somebody, you know. That's why it's not even allowed in boxing and in MMA. You know, you, you got that right. Yeah, you can't, you can't doing hit. That, yeah, that's Get where that. your vision and everything is located in your brain. You can't, you can't hit nobody in the back of the head, boy. And with something still like that? Man, Ooh. and well, completely defenseless and unaware. Yeah, oh, Lord, so jump on in there, Miss um, Nita, and you finish it off before we get out of here. She didn't just hit him. She nailed him. I mean, right. Like, right, and they made sure to put that clank, I mean, like, exactly. did you hear the sound effect? I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> This is not her first body. Remember, Lamar took, you know, he told the story about the body he caught. And um, mm -hmm. Kato's something else, man. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got 250 in the building. Can we get 250 likes? If you've never seen these wonderful people on screen with me, they all have channels. Links is in the description. Last mm -hmm. note before we get out of here, be sure to come here tomorrow at 8 o'clock. I will be interviewing Aceto from Hightown. And, um, someone from this very channel might be popping in to ask a question and then i'm also going to be getting this gentleman up here at some point in time as well high time uh -uh, but you know through. listen listen i gotta give you a warning What's you can't warning? call them save a home <laughs> <laughs> look let me tell you something my wife know good and well cedo watch these reviews now and you should have heard some of the jokes she had talking about some he a little too big to be getting on that top bump. I was like, uh, I got to interview this dude tomorrow. She was like, he know. I said, okay, we'll see. But ladies and gentlemen, that's it for us. J-Mo, you going to continue the conversation on your channel? Yes, sir. We about to keep it going. I uh, got a couple new little topics to talk about. And uh, I am going to talk about Dexter a little bit. Um, I don't know if y'all you checked it out, Moochie Anita Dexter. I didn't see tonight, I didn't see this week's episode. Yet. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 But, but I watched the first one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that new Dexter on Showtime is pretty good. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit, and uh, got a couple little things we talk about on BMF some more. So uh, definitely come on through. Yep, hit it up. J Mo reviews Surprise. right there. Make sure y'all come through. Um, you know, I see a lot of people that be uh, over there, up in here, and same. So I appreciate everybody coming through. And, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing y'all over there. Um, we chop it up some more. Yeah, 
Yep. Mm -hmm. That's going to do it, my people. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. Go check them out if they're going to keep the after party going. Till that next sex is hell video, which will be tomorrow. I'll see you. Deuces. Peace. Later, Al. <laughs>